In this lesson we are going to explore time filters and this type of filter is probably the most important one if you want to create typical reporting dashboards as we do it here in our example. I'm sure you already noticed that so far we displayed the total sales over the two years 2019 and 2020, which are in total the $24.6 million. What we typically want to see in a dashboard like this are yearly, quarterly or monthly sales values. And therefore I want to give you an overview how you can set up your time filters to get these results. If we go to the edit mode and click on story filters, we already saw that there are some predefined time filters. However, to fully understand the important principles behind time filters, I want to start from scratch and select a time dimension from the dimension category. In this example, we take the order date and we first start with the option filter by member. Here we have the order date in a hierarchical structure from year to the single days. Let's select for example 2019 and confirm. We go to the view mode to watch how this can be adjusted by our users. As you can see, our users would also have the option to select different levels of the time hierarchy but this time only for 2019 as we filtered it before. However, this is not the most skillful way, so let's delete this type of filter and select the other possible option, namely filter by range. Here we start with the easier type first and select fixed. In this setup we define a fixed time range which will stay the same whenever you open the dashboard. As a granularity we take month and now we can either select the range via drop down or the slider above. Ok, so let's see what happens if we filter from January to December 2020. If we now go to the story filter, we can easily set a desired time range with the slider. And this is much more comfortable than clicking through a hierarchy as you have seen before. So far we can only select ranges in the year 2020, but there is also a configuration option which says display entire range slider. And if you activate this one, not only the selected range for 2020 will be displayed for your users but the whole available time range. So when you open the dashboard there will be 2020 selected and now it's possible to select months from 2019. Ok, one more option for fixed time filters. So far we used the multiple selection but there is also an option called single value slider. Notice that the display entire slide option disappeared with this setting and with this option you can slide from month to month or from quarter to quarter if selected. Sometimes you have use cases where this option makes totally sense and you should remember it. Perfect, that's the fixed time filter and as I said, the settings for this type of filter stay fixed whenever you open your dashboard. So even if you open your dashboard one year later, the fixed filter will stay at 2020. I use fixed filters especially for analytics dashboards where I want as much flexibility as possible and normally I activate the entire range slider so that my users can select all possible time ranges. Analytics dashboards are used for example for ad hoc analyses with different demands and where questions are variable and to a large extent unpredictable. For our management dashboard however, we don't need this high flexibility, but we rather want to always present for example how we performed last month. So let's get back to the filter settings and select the type dynamic. 
Dynamic means that we need a current date from which the filter is dynamically calculated. Normally you use your system date, but you could also change manually to a specific date. Today is the 30th January of 2021. So if I leave all settings as they are, the time filter will select the current year 2021 as a filter. And when I hit OK, we get error messages on our charts, since our dataset contains no data for 2021. If you are using a live connection to your databases with daily or weekly loading processes, this should not be a problem. Going back to the filter settings, we change the granularity to month, since we want to display monthly values in our dashboard. Now our range 1 shows January 2021 with the range type standard. For the sake of completeness, let's have a quick look on the other granularity options. We could select day and then we would only see the current day, which is the 30th January. Or we could select the current month, which is a to date option. That means that all days from the first to the current day of the current month will be filtered. So notice that the 31st January is not included. A popular selection is the year to date view, which can be selected when clicking on current year. Since we are in January, the time range won't change, of course. Okay, but let's go back to month and our goal is to filter the last month, which is December. The look back option seems promising, however, when looking back one month, we now have December and January in our filter. So let's undo this and go to range type where we find the solution we actually want, because we need an offset for our requirement. A second row with new option appears and we now have to define the offset to our current date. We want to look back, the granularity has to be month and the amount has to be one since we want to look back one month. And as you can see, our range changes to December 2020. Let's have a look at another example. If you want to look back a whole year, select year as granularity and then January 2020 will be the filter in our case here. To be honest, this is not so intuitive and I recommend that you play with the different settings to get familiar with it. To check whether you have the right settings, just compare your demands with the time interval above or with the range dates. Okay, that's it. Our whole dashboard is filtered by December 2020 now with total sales of about $1.7 million. There's one thing I'm not satisfied at the moment. Our time series chart is also filtered by December 2020, which makes no sense. Therefore, we are going to convert the time filter to a page filter. Click on the right lane where we have our filter section and then convert the story filter. We then have to go to linked analysis and select all charts except of the time series chart. You know the settings from the linked analysis lesson. And now everything is filtered and we can still scroll through the different months. Perfect. Now you're familiar with time filters and you are able to set up those from scratch. But as you have seen, you can also use some predefined time filters. I delete our time filter and create a new one by inserting an input control. And instead of choosing the dimensions, this time we take the predefined ones. There are different types with and without offsets. And we choose for our case previous, the order date, and of course the month since we want to display the previous month. You could also use the to date options that I explained before. And that's it. 
pretty easy with the predefined filters. Nevertheless, it is crucial to understand the logic behind it because in practice you might have some special use cases. If you want to become the SAC expert in your team, then please check out my SAC masterclass on Udemy. Follow the link in the description and thanks for watching this video.